Thug suspected to be youths of nothing extraction attacked NSAS protesters in Abuja, injured many of them and destroyed vehicles of the protesters. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories now. At number 10, 15 commuters kidnapped in Ugeli North Council area of Delta State last Wednesday have been reportedly released. The 15 victims were freed on Tuesday morning after spending a week in the abductor's camp. Last Thursday, the driver of the interstate transit bus, including four others, was released. It was reported that an unknown number of persons had been abducted along the busy route with about five sustaining bullet wounds in the attack. The freed victims allegedly paid 500,000 to 5 million naira each before they were freed. Also, the manager of a new generation bank who was kidnapped on his way to work in Efurun Uve council area last Monday has been released by his captors. At number 9, Yahoo has announced plans to shut down Yahoo Groups from December 15th over huge decline in usage. Verizon, which bought Yahoo in 2017, announced the decision on its website on Tuesday, marking the end of the road for one of the largest message board systems on the web. On October 12th, the creation of new groups will be disabled on December 15th. People will no longer be able to send and receive emails from Yahoo. The website will also no longer be accessible. At number 8, a member of the House of Representatives, Nicholas Osai, has lamented the devastation caused by consequential floods in communities in Delta State. According to Osai, over 150 households have been displaced while about 90% of the Indokwa East local government area of Delta has been submerged by the floods. Osai, while briefing journalists in Abuja on Wednesday, noted that the communities are often prone to serious environmental disaster as a result of constant coastal flooding and erosion from the River Niger. He also urged the National Emergency Management Agency to urgently provide relief materials for the flood victims in accordance with Section 6 of NEMA Act. At number 7, a 34-year-old Nigerian, Austin Chenge, is in the race for the governorship position in the state of Michigan in the United States of America in 2022. A statement by Abdul Rahman Balogun, the head of Media and Public Relations Unit, Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, indicated that Chenge, a native of Benue State in Nigeria, will challenge USA Representative Lamar Smith for the ticket under the Republican Party. It said Chenge announced his intention to run for governor of Michigan in March 2020, making him the first Republican to do so. Chenge is a law graduate from the University of Birmingham, England. Since the year 2018, he has been serving with the U.S. military as a specialist. At number 6, on Tuesday, transactions on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange recorded marginal gain, putting a halt to four days' loss. The market's breadth also closed positive with 18 losers against 15 gainers. The Nigerian Stock Exchange All Share Index gained 6.55 basis points or 0.02% to close at 28,344.04 as against 28,337 recorded on Monday. The market capitalization of equities appreciated by 3 billion naira or 0.02% to close at 14.814 trillion naira. Meanwhile, a turnover of 535.83 million shares exchanged in 4.498 deals was recorded in Tuesday's trading. At number 5, the Federal Ministry of Health has urged Nigerians to visit and utilize the newly deployed health online portal to report issues about COVID-19 and other infectious diseases in their various locations. The Permanent Secretary of the Federal Ministry of Health, Abdulaziz Abdullahi, stated this while receiving COVID-19 sensitization materials donated by the Institute of Electrical Electronic Engineers Young Professionals, Nigeria section, as part of measures to stem the pandemic. Abdullahi, who received 1,000 posters from the Institute in Abuja on behalf of the federal government, urged Nigerians to imbibe safe care-seeking behavior and visit the new platform at www.hpd.health.gov to report health issues. He said utilizing the portal would assist the government to keep track of COVID-19, infectious and non-infectious diseases in Nigeria. At number 4, the 774,000 Special Public Works Program will commence on November 1, 2020. President Muhammadu Buhari approved the request of the Minister of State for Labor and Employment, Festus Kayamo, to reschedule the commencement date of the program from October 1 to November 1. In a statement signed by the minister in Abuja yesterday, the approval was based principally on his memo to the president, informing him that most of the proposed project sites were still waterlogged and that the rains have not subsided, whereas the program was designed for execution during the dry season. The program is engaging 1,000 persons from each of the 774 local government areas in the country for manual jobs for three months.
At number three, the Senate has directed its committees on petroleum downstream and gas resources to investigate the recent gas explosions in Lagos State. The two panels were asked to probe the remote and immediate causes of the explosions with a view to preventing reoccurrence and report to the Senate in the next two weeks. The Senate took the decision following a point of order moved by the Senator representing Lagos West Senatorial District, Solomon Adiola, on the issue. The National Emergency Management Authority and the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development were asked to immediately send relief materials to affected victims. The federal lawmakers also asked the federal government to offset medical bills of hospitalized victims. The Senate also asked the Department of Petroleum Resources, Lagos State Town Planning Authority, the Fire Service and the Federal Road Safety Corps to review the modus operandi safety procedures of transporting gas in Nigeria. At number two, in the early hours of Wednesday, Cross River State Police Command busted a baby factory in Obot Udonna village in Akampa local government area of the state, rescuing two pregnant women and three children. This was disclosed by the Commissioner of Police in Cross River State, Abdul Kadir Jimo, while parading a three-man robbery gang that specializes in raping their victims and demanding oral sex. The police said the covert rescue operation was carried out based on credible intelligence, which they acted upon and apprehended the operator of the baby factory, Imabong Asuko. The commissioner revealed that the prime suspect operated the baby factory in a home and sells a baby for 500,000 naira each in collaboration with another suspect simply identified as Iko. Finally, at number one, thugs suspected to be used of northern extraction attacked NSAS protesters in Abuja, injured many and destroyed vehicles of the protesters. It was gathered that the thugs attacked the protesters at Bega Junction with cutlass and other weapons a few minutes after the commencement of the protest on Wednesday. For more than three days running, NSAS protesters calling for an end to police brutality occupied the Lekki Toll Gate, Lagos State and Wari Delta State on Wednesday. The protesters in Lagos were undeterred by the heavy rainfall. They trooped out in numbers in raincoats and with umbrellas to continue to demand for an end to police brutality, removal of the dreaded SARS units from the streets, justice for the victims, amongst other demands. Always remember to wear your mask, wash your hands and stay safe. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.